You know it. We know it. Next year is creeping up quick. If you want to win inside your niche in 2024, you need tech that puts you in the pilot seat. The new HubSpot Sales Hub will help you close out the year strong and kickstart your success for 2024. Teams can collaborate on every inch of the customer journey and keep operations running smoothly with a comprehensive prospecting workspace and powerful sales analytics tools that keep data connected across teams. They'll help you whip up assets and execute tasks that used to take hours out of your workday. HubSpot Sales Hub lets you accelerate every facet of your sales operation with precision. And with over 1,400 integrations, there are tons of ways to mix in new features. So finish out Q4 strong and gear up for the new year with HubSpot Sales Hub. Learn more at HubSpot.com slash sales. Howdy, folks. It is Thursday, March 30th. I'm Jacob Cohen here with Juliet bennett Ryla, and you are listening to The Hustle Daily Show. It's opening day. That's referring to baseball, in case you weren't sure. I'm not sure either of us are big baseball fans, but it's not going to stop us from talking about the booming business of the sport and its growing mounds of cash. Also, Walmart apparently hired a director of workplace mobility. We're going to get into what that means and why it's actually pretty important in just a bit. But first, let's talk about what else is going on in the world of business and tech. Let's get crackalackin'. So this is pretty cool. Nokia says it will install 4G internet on the moon mm. later this year. I'm talking Wi-Fi on the moon? Yeah, you know, I've had uh, I've had services that can't even get it in my apartment. So this is <laughs> especially exciting. Oh, uh, yeah. We, this is, uh, you can't get Wi-Fi on Amtrak, but we're going to have it on the moon first. Uh, yes. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> so who's, what's the use case here? Now, apparently this is for astronauts um, who will be able to communicate with one another and mission control. And ideally, the lunar network would support future exploration and perhaps eventually a longer term human presence on the moon, which I thought was pretty neat. It is very neat. Now, here back on Earth, uh, we recently covered school boards and counties suing social media, alleging that their platforms are designed to be addictive and lead to or exacerbate mental health issues, especially among teens and younger users. Well, now we've got another lawsuit. This time it's the state of Arkansas mm. and they're suing TikTok, its parent company, ByteDance and Meta. Social media companies have in the past defended themselves by sharing what protections they do have for teen users like screen limits. But experts and probably as any of us who were ever a teenager knows, uh, it is often very easy to get around those things that are supposed to stop us <laughs> yes, <laughs> doing other things. Probably the, the younger you are, the easier it is at this it, point. Exactly. And the last thing I was looking at today is Amazon Pharmacy will automatically apply manufacturer discounts to eligible patient orders. This is particularly useful for patients who forget that those coupons exist or consider them a hassle. That would be me. A recent study found I am not alone. Uh, people only use available coupons 15% of the time. So mm. there you go. Amazon will add it for you. There you go. Amazon. Very nice. All right. Well, in other news, Goldman Sachs is out with a report estimating generative AI systems can eventually raise annual global GDP by 7% and put around 300 million full-time jobs on a direct crash course with automation. Meanwhile, Elon Musk, Steve Wozniak, and a bunch of other tech leaders and AI researchers signed an open letter calling for a momentary pause in the development of increasingly powerful AI models in response. Others said the group is just fear-mongering or trying to give some of the slower, newer companies in the space time to catch up to OpenAI. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman told the Wall Street Journal the company has long given priority to safety and development before their launches and that, in some sense, they're just preaching to the choir here. Also, listen up. Uh, no, like literally in today's newsletter, we link to a new Sonic logo. Wikipedia parent company Wikimedia has selected to represent itself and the sound of all human knowledge. It's It sounds like a daunting task, to be honest, but I actually think they found a great option. So you should go listen to it. And also, it's been a weird couple months and now a weird week, I think, for the metaverse. It's... Uh, I think kind of past its initial hype cycle peak. We've seen struggles at Meta. The reports this week of Disney shutting its Metaverse team, though I think what probably happened there was just more of a delegation of responsibilities to other teams. And just yesterday, though, 
Apple announced the dates for its Worldwide Developers Conference in June, where the company is widely anticipated to announce its mixed reality headset on June 5th, which, who knows, could set off an even greater hype cycle than what we've seen. Mm -hmm. We've also got an Americano mano a mano. Senator Bernie Sanders faced off with Starbucks exec Howard Schultz yesterday over the chain's anti-unionization efforts, which Sanders called the most aggressive and illegal union-busting campaign in the modern history of our country. Schultz repeatedly denied wrongdoing. And lastly, this sentence is about to sound very out of touch, but that's the point. The egg shortage that had consumers paying 70% more uh, recently was not bad for everyone. Last quarter's profits went up 718% year over year for Calmaine Foods, the largest egg producer in the U.S. Hmm, good for them. I hope they passed some of that down to their chickens, maybe gave them a nice holiday bonus. <laughs> yes, yes. Throwing, a, throwing an extra egg in every carton, you know. Yeah. Okay, so baseball starts today. And, uh, you know, as Ben said, Ben's our new boss, by the way, our editor. <laughs> He said, uh, this is our year is a phrase that's going to be uttered by fans of all 30 Major League Baseball teams today as the new season starts. And that by the fall, 29 of them, <laughs> 29 of those fan bases will discover they were terribly wrong. But many of them will have also forked over a whole lot of money along the way. Uh, so we're just going to go through some numbers here, uh, some baseball numbers. Uh, the MLB set a $10.8 billion revenue record last season, and franchise values are soaring. Uh, last year, the average team was worth $2.31 billion per Sportico. The sport has also put up some other big stats and big numbers. Another neat one here, streaming technology first developed in the early 2000s by Major League Baseball, sold to Disney for $3.48 billion, according to Forbes, and the deal's final $900 million came through this offseason. As for how teams are spending money, uh, since the Houston Astros hoisted the trophy last November, Teams have signed players to $3.78 billion in contracts per sport track. Now, as for how fans are spending money, a night at an Astros game between tickets, parking, souvenirs, drinks, and hot dogs for four now costs $355, according to Axios. Across the league, that combo will run an average of $256 per per game. Obviously, the priciest team uh, under those conditions is the Boston Red Sox, who are located about one mile from where I'm sitting at $385 a game. Plus, the MLB was just guaranteed at least $400 million through a five-year ticketing partnership with SeatGeek that was announced last month. Now, as Ben wrote in today's newsletter, teams have even more money up their sleeves, or as he said, well, on their sleeves. Teams are newly permitted to sell ad space on their uniforms, uh, deals for the sponsored patches range from 5 to $17 million per year in some cases. Ben, <laughs> by the way, described this development as grotesque and atrocious. I think he's a big fan. And big picture, though, it's not <laughs> all fun and games. While America's pastime remains a lucrative business, certainly, it has lost its throne to the NFL and its $19 billion or so annual revenue. There are also plenty of other threats to baseball's finances. Attendance has dropped for nine straight seasons. The MLB recently tried changing some rules to speed up games and hired ad firms to lure back live audiences. Also, Diamond Sports Group, a broadcasting partner for 14 years, just entered bankruptcy and Diamond's uncertainty looms large. Regional TV deals comprise around 20% of teams' revenue, according to ESPN. All right, now, Juliet. Apparently, last year, Walmart created a new position called the Director of Workplace Mobility. And apparently, that doesn't have to do with giving people promotions or <laughs> switching jobs internally. Apparently, it has to literally do with moving people around. Mm -hmm. What is this role and why is it a big deal? So, the role went to a woman named Courtney Barrett. And her goal is to get 10% of the employees at the company's Bentonville, Arkansas headquarters to commute to work by any means other than driving by themselves in a car by 2025. Okay. 
By and that is when the company, yes, that's when the company will be finished building their new campus there. Here are the parameters for this. To hit this goal, an employee has to walk, bike, ride a scooter, carpool, take public transit, anything other than like sit by themselves in their car at least two to three times per week for at least one year. The benefits for Walmart are fairly obvious, you know, lower carbon footprint. So they can talk about that. Less mm-hmm. traffic at their office and in surrounding areas. And if you're biking and walking to work today, that's, that's great. You're getting some exercise in every day. Uh, but right now, not even 1% of employees are doing that. Wah, so wah, wah. Um, Courtney Barrett has a bit of an uphill battle. Now, here is what is interesting to me as someone who is a, as I've said many times before, a public transit enthusiast. Yes. <laughs> in the Bloomberg article, Cindy Mersiglio, she's the senior VP of corporate real estate and Barrett's manager, told Bloomberg that they do not have the infrastructure programs or incentives to encourage this, even on days when the weather is great. And they've been doing a lot of stuff. They're forming biking groups. They're letting workers try out bikes, including e-bikes in the parking lot. They're partnering with groups that advocate for protected bike lanes. And they're providing access to lockers, safe bike parking, and showers. Showers Mm. is a lot of things people forget about when they're like, ride five miles uphill to work and then come (laughs) in and be all sweaty. And, And that is always what's key to me is in the infrastructure in place. Because every single day I look at these uh, supposed public transit mobility programs that are designed by people with cars and they absolutely fail because they do not think about what it is like to actually not have a car. Like, where do you put your bike? Is there a place to shower? Is there a place to change my clothes? How much trouble will I be in if there's a service interruption and now I'm 20 minutes late and it wasn't my fault? I was there on time. That's something that (laughs) happens to me all the time to the point where I'm leaving an hour early for everything. But also... Here's something that I found even more interesting. I looked up where their office is going to be in Bentonville okay. on a map. And I was like, Google, how do I take public transit from Fayetteville, which is about a 40 minute drive to Bentonville? And it was like, you don't. <laughs> it's <laughs> there like, wasn't anything. <laughs> no results. <laughs> so I was like, all right. Uh, so Google is not always you know, the best at public transit sometimes. Um, so then I looked up the public transit system in the area, and it turns out there is one bus that makes a loop in Bentonville near a college, and that's about three miles away from where it appears the new Walmart campus will go. So not great unless you want to walk three miles to work every day uh, or or bike, I guess you could hop on a bike. Mm-hmm. But then I found there's also an on-demand service where it looks like a, a van will come pick you up on demand. You have to be in the zone. So if you live in Fayetteville or one of the other nearby cities, again, nothing for you. But you can take that micro transit van from the college to the new Walmart campus location. I downloaded this app. I looked to see what options would be available for me to do this. And it said, sorry, we're busy. There are none. Mm. So (laughs) considering that possibly you could have a job at a place like this, but maybe for some reason, disability, other reasons, you cannot ride a bike. You cannot walk three miles. Maybe that's not an option for you. So you want to take the bus. There is not a bus. So I don't know. I think Walmart's going to have to try a little harder. I think they might have <laughs> to invest in a shuttle like some of the tech companies have that picks people up. Yeah. Because um, the way I'm looking at it, biking, that is so great. But if you can't bike or you don't want to bike or you don't feel safe biking or, or whatever the reason is, uh, as Google says, you don't. You don't. <laughs> and bada bing, bada boom. That's going to do it for us today, folks. Thanks for tuning in to the Hustle Daily Show. We're a proud part of the HubSpot Podcast Network. Our editor today is Ezra Trupiano. Our executive producer is Darren Clark. We've got a lot more tech and business coverage in our newsletter. If you're not subscribed, go sign up at thehustle.co slash email. Hope you have a terrific Thursday and we'll see you tomorrow. Hey, I want to tell you about another podcast brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business professionals. This one is called My First Million, hosted by Sam Parr and Sean Puri. My First Million features famous guests like Alice Hermosi, Sophia Amoruso, and Hassan Minaj sharing their secrets for how they made their first million and how to apply their learnings to capitalize on today's business trends and opportunities. So for example, in a recent episode, Sean discusses how his former intern, went from making $30,000 a year to $40,000 in one minute by taking one big bet. And today, he's a 22-year-old millionaire, thanks to a couple early investments. Want to know more? You can listen to My First Million wherever you get your podcasts. 